Well, good morning, everybody. This is Carlos. I'm home from the wars. Let me just put my phone away. I came out today specifically to record a show. Time 10 minutes, 8 seconds. Distance 1 kilometers. Average heart rate 81. Workout average pace 10 minutes, 6 seconds per kilometer. And uh, halfway down my street, I realized I'd forgotten to bring my voice recorder. So I have my camera, I have my phone. Two out of three ain't bad. I've done uh, the first kilometer quite quickly here. I've set myself a 12 minute pace target. So uh, I'm planning to do about nine kilometers today. I have lots of stuff to buy, all the knickknacks that have run out at the same time. Coffee, coffee filters, uh, coffee cream, all the coffees, plus my oatmeal. I've got to buy some more porridge. Today is recovery day eight, I think, or nine. I pulled my hamstring muscle in Toronto and I have been back over a week now. So it's quite strange for me not being able to run even before when I used to run every other day. I uh, I don't often go for more than two days without running. Morning. Two minutes, 20 seconds ahead. And now walking on long Robin Wood with the phone in its pouch gently bouncing against my Welsh wool sweater and my solar plexus. I have my good camera with me so I will take advantage of this moment to take a picture of Mount Doug as it's looking particularly glorious in uh, its early morning golden tones. Hello, dog. <laughs> there you go. It's okay. I'm just taking a picture of the mountain. That's all. <laughs> that's it. Get off the road. All right. Oswald wasn't too keen on me stopping on his front yard. I wasn't on his yard, but his neighbour, his master, I should say, was having a cigarette outside. I've noticed that a lot nowadays. People who have friends who smoke have to go outside, or people who have kids that smoke have to go outside to do that. I'm sorry if you're hearing a lot of thump, thump, thumping. But right, really and truly, you get used to it. It's the same cadence as my walking, my hiking, I should say. The dogs are very conscious of early morning noises. Pretty soon I'm going to be in the thick of it, in the dense forest, heading towards... Arbutus Ridge, Arbutus Mount, I should say. My friend Keith in Japan was questioning my photograph of a plane tree bark. Plane trees aren't that common here, to tell you the truth. They do have interesting barks. I used to live on a street in England with the plane trees. There you go, that's the weir 
You can probably hear the weir from here. So much of my life now is deja vu. I have done this walk. I have done this walk many times with you. And uh, as I'm recovering still from my hamstring, I'm doing this walk again with you. Should be interesting. It's beautiful. We're going to be, well, I'm going to be seeing a lot of familiar sights just past the weir. Started off with Mount Dagi in all its glory. Hopefully, that noise will be low pitch, not an annoying rustling sound. It's basically wool on wool. That's what you're hearing. The pouch for the phone is an old sock. And my sweater is an old sheep. There goes a rabbit, a hare, across my path. Now, Norma was warning me yesterday. She came out here running and she said that it's quite hard to see where the trail is because of all the leaves. I'm now walking ankle deep in maple leaves. I think the naming of this episode will wait. I have already had a few ideas, but I will wait looking for that special moment that will sum up today's hike. Today's hike I'm recording with the Spreaker app in real time. I have my gloves on so I really don't want to have to stop to uh, adjust my phone. I can take pictures with my gloves on. That is an analog device. It has big buttons. Yep, my Lumix camera with the big lens. This is the early morning traffic to my left. People on Cordova Bay Road going to work, going to school, kind of thing. I'm going to be getting up to that famous mushroom colony in a second. I will take a picture of that. I'm keeping um, a visual diary of how that colony has progressed. Luckily, every photograph that I take has a date on it, even if it's not on display. It is in the information you get the photo on the computer and you can see all the information about the camera that took it and when it was taken, what date. That's if you have your camera set to real time. Most cameras nowadays, when you plug them into your computer, will automatically set themselves to real time. But, uh... We'll see how this goes. I'm trying to keep track of uh, my real-time recording because I'm not too sure how long this show will be. I can never really tell at this stage. I will stop it on Glen Denning probably when I come off Arbutus Mount. But basically I want to take pictures of the Arbutus bark for my friend in Japan. Ah, I'm at the colony now. Mushroom colony, week four. It's beginning to show signs of decay. Things are falling off it. Now, camera setting is good. Scenery should be good. And... uh, The other thing that I noticed was that uh, 
the battery here on my uh, nice camera is a little low. I have not unlimited photos today. I have a limited number of pictures that I can take. I'm now up to two. The nice thing about this camera is, by some miracle of fate, it is linked into uh, my relive map. So these photographs will appear where they're supposed to be on this hike. Excuse me, that was my porridge. I have to cross Cordova Bay Road now, so I'm going to stop talking and concentrate on not getting run over. Very busy time of the day. Not too sure what's going on there, but I guess everybody has to get somewhere by 9 or 8.30. That's around that time of the day. So now I'm heading straight out, straight up the Norn Irvine connector, heading towards Albutus Mount. I'm steep. It's getting steeper anyway. I'm beginning to feel the twinges in my hamstring. Little twinges of pain. Good food and rest is helping. Mind you, my idea of rest is somewhat different from most people. I tend to get more active with the walking in the gym when I'm on rehab. 13 seconds, distance 2 kilometers, average heart rate 104, workout average pace 11 minutes 6 seconds per kilometer. I heard that, 11 minutes, something, and I've slowed down on the hill, but it's not very long before I'm there, and then I'll be heading downhill, which will be nice. This is where the bushes come across the trail to meet me from both sides. This is an area of Mount Douglas where there is a lot of twin trees. I'll show you what I mean with this photograph when you get to see it. This whole area has twinned trees. And there's two over there of different species, quite close together. And then there's two here, which I will take vertically. That uh, are touching in a very sort of symbiotic way their roots are probably hugging each other's underground all right so i climbed some more through the thick of the salal bushes that's what's on either side of me salal as i put the camera away and try not to drop my glove at the same time. All right. Yep, I'm on target. It's going to be about 2.4k to get to Arbutus Mount via the route that I'm taking today. And then it's going to be about another six and a half, seven k to do the rest of my shopping expedition. Now I'm looking for a little dead stump to the right, and that tells me the way to go 
to get to my first destination, which should be glorious, provided the battery holds out on my camera. I should be able to take some really good pictures up there. Pictures for the friends. Audio for the Your Five Minutes page. Audio for my show. It's all happening today. This is glorious. I love it. I don't actually mind being injured sometimes. It gives me a real appreciation of when I am running. And also it gives me a chance to see things a little clearer. Normally I'm flashing through here. I don't get a chance to stop and see the beauty. All right, and now officially climbing on the mount that I'm heading for. There's the new tree that's blown down here. Should take a picture of it. It is an Arbutus after all. Incredible density of this wood. This looks like another tree monster. The, this is a broken Arbutus that came down very, very recently. Looks almost like it came down yesterday. Anyway, I have to push on to the top here. This is where I get that nice stretch in my hamstring muscle and my Achilles. Yep, I couldn't have timed it better for the daylight. The sun is breaking over the edge of the trees, making everything glow quite beautifully. Another picture. Have to get a little closer to the bark for my friend. I see a piece of bark for him. So this is for Keith Brown in Japan. Arbutus bark at its very best. Well, my day is done now. Theoretically, I have done what I plan to do here. I could head back, but I won't, not just yet. There's still some good photographs to take, but I'm on the wrong path here. I have to go on to the other side of this Arbutus tree to see the view that I wanted to see originally, the one that you always envisage in your mind when you're planning a familiar route. You know where you're going. You know what you're going to see. So you might as well see it and photograph it and be done with it. Yep. It is nice to have an independent camera from my phone. Quality's better for one. And also, I know I'm not going to be interfering with any of the electronics that's going on. I've got my voice recorder and my GPS tracker all working at once on the phone. Having an independent image capture device is much more stable, much more stable setup. All right, now this is the million dollar view. Okay, great, that should be enough. I'm heading back now. 
back the way I came, out through Glendenning, and then I'm heading towards University Heights for my shopping. I one haven't... minute, 25 seconds behind. Oh, one minute, 25 seconds behind, I think I heard. I have uh, an empty backpack. I'm putting my camera away. I don't think I'll see anything now that will stop me to, will force me, will oblige me to pull it out again. I can put it away now, put my glove back on and try and regain my pace, which as I say, should be quite easy with it being downhill all the way back. I just have to try not to trip over. I have decided not to run with Derek tomorrow because my leg is not fully recovered yet. It would be foolish for me to ride two hours in the cold to run for 30 minutes with Derek on a questionable leg. I'm better off staying in my neighborhood and running possibly 50 minutes with my lovely wife. She wants to run with me on Thursday. I see no reason why I shouldn't oblige. So, the advantage of this show being on Spreaker, it means... Hello. Nice view up there, eh? Beautiful. Hi there. Another couple of hardy septuagenarians, I'm guessing, 70 years old people. A couple, active, lean, elderly couple. All right, now the speed increases on the downhill slope. As I was saying before those two people, got in the way of my thoughts that uh, because I'm recording with the Spreaker app, I will be able to upload it from the mall. So I should take a picture with uh, my phone just so that I have a title photograph that I can include from today's walk hike. Hopefully I don't stop the recording here. Got it. Now carefully go back to my studio app and check that I have 23 minutes recorded. I can put some music on now. That's the other thing about this app. It lends itself to playing music, even though I can't hear it, I know it's going on, I'll put the phone away, now that I have everything I need for my show, I have a title photograph, I have pictures from, um, Arbutus Mount, and um, I have an audio file that will be shared as soon as I get back online. Oop, ow. I just kicked a tree stump, and the shock wave that went through my hamstring reminded me of the pain. I really hope it's not a long-term thing. I might actually think about getting a massage, but it's more to do with a muscle tear than anything else, I'm pretty sure. And the massage probably wouldn't help the tear too much. Gentle flexing and stretching might be the secret to my recovery. Well, 
I'll let you hear the music while I pick up the pace a little bit. You're going to be hearing traffic noise as well, unfortunately. This is that early morning rush of people, busy people doing things. I noticed Jim put out a show on his other platform, his Spreaker account. Yep. One thing about Jim, his recordings are always extremely clean, acoustically, you know what I mean? He lives out in the country, quiet surroundings, all you hear is the geese and the birds. And his timer. It was so noticeable when I looked at the sound wave from his show that he was doing intervals with a timer. It almost looked like the tines of a fork every time the interval was for him to be running. The spikes would get long and then when he was walking they would get short very regular. His voice recorder is very good. Excellent quality. Mind you, I'm very happy with mine. I think I might buy a new one. I can afford it. Hello. Hi, little dog. It's only me. good time for people to take their dogs for walks. Wisely, she had that little chap on a leash. Far too frisky and far too inexperienced to deal with the situation here. Crossing the main parking lot at Churchill Drive. The gates are closed. The parking lot is full. This is the reverse direction from when Norma and I run. We'll be running this trail coming the opposite way tomorrow. I turned off the heart rate change, the zone change. It was beginning to get a little bit too annoying. I, I knew I was in pain. I didn't need her reminding me every 10 seconds. Time 37 minutes 59 seconds. Distance 3 kilometers. Average heart rate 95. Workout average pace 12 minutes 38 seconds per kilometer. Okay, stop talking to hear that. 1238. That's good. It'll be around 12 by the time I get onto asphalt again. I'm gonna keep this going until um, Glen Denning, and then I will pull the plug on the audio. That should be about the right length of show. I think I was on 20 something. Maybe less, I, I, I just can't remember now. But I've done 3K in, in total, that's 3 12 to 36, so can't be more than 36 because I started at around 12k, 12 minutes I should say. Now this is an example of futile time wasting by the corporation grounds people. There's a tree stump that has been cut because it was probably endangering the trail. And uh, the employee on our dollar decided to use his spare time to carve a mushroom stalk out of a tree stump. Um, I'm not sure if that's good 
a good thing or not. I don't think it is, quite frankly. He's doing his job. He's not playing games with our money. And somebody lent him a chainsaw. Good for him. He doesn't need to spend time doing stuff like that. Alright, so I've had my little rant. One day I'm going to bump into him and we're going to come to blows. As I concentrate putting my phone, my phone, my Lumix back in the fanny pack. A huge fanny pack for me anyway. But I keep my Lumix and that's one of the reasons I don't run with it. It is a huge camera and dropping it, just even a minor bump would probably ruin the optics in one way or another. Norma said she had something similar happen to her. She put the camera, her camera, her old, I think it might have been a Lumix as well, but she put her old camera on the car floor behind her seat and then she pushed her seat back and uh, crushed the lenses of her camera. The telescopic tubes were out, which meant that uh, the camera was basically fucked. Excuse my French. Label this one explicit. Hi. Yep. So very soon I'll be on Glendening, and I heard seconds behind, which is encouraging. Not too many minutes, I hope. I think it was just seconds behind. You heard it better than I did. I must see how the music is going. I'm going to take a picture of this sign as well. Oak of Brent. Brent Midland is singing. shadow there. Alright, so now that I'm here, I can see that I have 33 minutes of uh, show recorded. I will slide Brent's volume down so I can basically say goodbye to you in the next few minutes without having him singing. Let me just put this away until I get to Harvest Lane. That should be just about the right time for me to say bye-bye. Hello, doggy. Hi. Yeah, how's it going? Good. Another woman with a dog. This one on a string. Hi. Yeah, I've seen that before. They have very, very long strings, ropes attached to their dog, which means that they can let the dog loose while they're running beside the dog, so to speak, behind the dog. They can also always put their foot on the string if they need to restrain the dog. It's not a bad idea, but the dog has to be semi-well behaved for that to work. Otherwise, it'll just take off and unless you can keep up with it, it's gone. Here comes somebody I should know. Yep. Hello, doggy. Hi. Hi. Yep, that 
dog had a ball in its mouth. That was a retriever. I know Three that woman. Five seconds behind. 55 seconds behind. And I'm about done with this recording. Not quite on Glendenning. Getting close. So this is the Harvest Lane exit. I can take a picture from here. This is where I broke my Achilles. Hello. How are you? Good. Oh. Oh. All right. So this is where I say bye bye to you. For the last time today. Actually, it's for the first time today that I'm saying bye-bye to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>